And now we're moving on to our picks of the week, where we talk about different things in the world of entertainment, such as games, movies, TV shows, board games, uh, books, whatever it is, we want to talk about it because we think you guys might like it. Uh, we're not saying they're the best things in the world, but there is some enjoyment to be had. So strap in and let's have a quick listen to what we've got. So Antichrist Redfield, for the very first time, what is your pick of the week? So historically, and I say historically because I've roped Scotty into doing this, uh, I like looking for dead MMOs and try to find see if there's like any <laughs> any MMOs that have been revived. And I roped him into a uh, a Fantasy Star Online episode one, two, and four server, which we had we had some fun with that. I think we played yeah, it was it. fun, uh, good time. Uh, there is a Shin Megami Tensei mmo that really you know yeah so like we have a small like me in my circle of friends we have a small little smt uh community amongst ourselves and one of my buddies was just like yo there's the shin megami tensei mmo and i'm just like yeah i know about that i played it in college and he's just like no their server is up i'm like <laughs> fuck you it's not <laughs> and that's a lie but no, lo and behold, Shin Megami Tensei Imagine, the MMO from like 2007 that ran from 2007 to I believe about 2009, 2010, um, is back up. There is a private server going up, but it is the Japanese version. So it is very early. I think that it's only been around for about six months, which in all actuality isn't a whole lot of time when you consider uh, how long the 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 english translated servers of fantasy star online 2 have been around for because they got an entire team that will patch a uh, a Jap uh, or translate uh, a japanese patch like overnight with those servers wow. before we got microsoft giving us support on that no shin megami tensei imagine is an mmo in the same theme and setting as shin megami tensei you you get demons to battle on your behalf but again it is action oriented rpg uh combat so it's 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 very very cool if you're a fan of the series if you're a fan of the aesthetics uh it's it's sick it's dope it's it's a good time just don't go in there expecting to know everything that the game is trying to teach you because it is not translated all the way they've done like they've done story dialogue and they've done like certain items and weapons you can navigate through the menu but like I the last stream I had, I had Red Jaguar on with me. Uh, he's been popping in my streams a lot lately. Nice. And uh, we we're going through Imagine, and any time that they try to teach you something, it's all in Japanese. And he's just like, I love how like the tutorial of the game showing you how to play is in a language that you can't understand, and it'll tell <laughs> you in English. Did you get all that? And I'm like, Fuck no, I didn't get all that. <laughs> Uh, but combat combat is fun. Combat is interesting. I mean, it's it's you're looking at a snapshot snapshot into the past, and that's just like the thing that you got to keep in mind. Like, mm. it's not something that you're probably going to dive into and play all the time. It's it's similar to Fancy Star Online. Uh, that game is not robust. It is a very early basic console RPG, MMO RPG. This one's a little bit more fleshed out but again it's it's not going to be anything like wow it's not going to be anything like final fantasy 11 uh it's just it's an interesting play i do recommend that you go check it out though it's okay it's fascinating awesome yeah i to be, yeah to be honest i didn't even realize that existed in the first place so mm -hmm. not a lot of people do like yeah. when i found out about it i kind of like surprised it on my viewers and red jaguar was just like wait that's a fucking thing i'm like it's a thing <laughs> It's a thing. I played it when it first came out, and it was cool. Like at, when the, when the servers were closing, um, like it had a, a moderately large uh, following, but it was like it's not huge. But when the servers were closing, they reenacted the apocalypse. So they brought every single high level monster onto the field oh. to kill all the players. It was oh it was and like fires raining down from the sky. I'm like, okay, this is this is this is sick. This That's is a good so way to cool. Take care of they cleanse the servers. Exactly. Wow. Like, if you follow the themes and the storyline of Shin Megami Tensei, you would sit there and be like, okay, that's, that's fitting. That's... And then you go cry yourself to sleep because wow. you'll never talk to your friends in, in Europe again. Yeah. That's... Yeah. 
I've often, because th- I've never actually been around, never really played MMOs enough to really know what it's like to have the servers taken offline and stuff for a game that mm. I played so much that I've made f- really good friends and stuff. So yeah, I've always wondered how they do that. Do they just go, oh yeah, 12 p.m. We're going to shut it off, and then they just, the the devs or whoever just go, yeah, just press the button, or do they actually do something like that? Oh uh, no, so they cool. they announce like usually when an MMO is is going to sleep for the last time, they'll announce it well into advance, like a month or two in advance, and so people will generally either drop off hard or play as much of it as they can because there's like huge communities, like people have gotten yeah. married off of MMOs. Yeah. Like you build a lot of relationships through there. So during the end where they pretty much like hit the self destruct button and shit started going to hell, it was it was nuts. It was crazy. And like yeah. you you could still see everyone's dead body on the ground. They're all trying to talk and shit like that. And it was it was nuts. <laughs> God, yeah, that oh. sounds so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's heartbreaking almost. It's like oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I do. I yeah. I, do, I am semi i mean i I don't play them but uh, i'm semi familiar with how they'll just like max out everyone's everything and give you everything you know um at the end there some some more some of the more interesting things you'll see is just people running in the last second and stuff and and not uh, comparable but not the exact same thing it reminds me of um some stuff that the giant bomb website has done they'll hop into like playstation home the last day that it's active and stuff like that and it's just mass hysteria but it shows how much potential (laughs) certain things had and, and, yeah. and things like that. But uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think it'd be really funny if like someone just like comes on and goes, Hey guys, I just bought this yesterday. What's up? And it's like the world's coming in. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you've got like one minute left to play this dude. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, the game was free to play. So they, oh, if, you, if you were, if you were going and buying something that, that would be some wild ass shit. Yeah. Oh, Six dollars on a dead game. <laughs> That's, and, and yet somehow Sonic the Fighters servers are still up. I don't oh, understand that. that. <laughs> I well, don't okay. Understand. I'll have to play. All right, Graham, listen. Sorry. What we do sometimes. <laughs> uh you you've been away for most of these, but uh uh Mega Visions I... and it's and it's a result of the Sega Addicts doing this as well. We will sometimes have a group of us hop on the PlayStation 3 uh, re-release of Sonic the Fighters, and for some reason the servers are still up. So we still we fight each other, and we claim to be the best players in the world at, at, on that night. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I, I, I need my head to know that. Oh, sorry, I need to convert all y'all to Sonic Smackdown. That's that's a proper fucking fighting game. What's and it's super- Oh, you don't know Sonic Smackdown, bro? Sonic Smackdown's a shit. So it is a Marvel. I want to say it's a cross between Marvel and Guilty Gear or Arxis style games where um, it's it's a it's a four button fighter. You right. have light, medium, heavies, and then you have like the, the launcher ability. But it's it's like any other anime game where, you know, Sonic has like a spin dash that shoots off a, a, a winds uh, like a I forget what the move that he had in Sonic Adventure 2, but like a wind blast and like his ult okay. is turning supersonic and using the team blast from Sonic Heroes. Uh, Mecha Sonic from Sonic 3 and Knuckles is in there in addition with Metal Sonic. And like they throw in little gags where Mecha Sonic has the, the raging demon art from Akuma's, uh, from Akuma in like Street Fighter. Uh, he's got a fucking spirit bomb. It's, it's crazy, bro. You gotta it's, it's- go up. Is this an official Sega game. release? Oh, no, it? it's a fan game. So oh, okay, the right. over at um, Arct Forge create, okay. is trying to market their own game. It's called Origin of Storms. But they took the engine from Origin of Storms to build a pipe and put Sonic characters in there. Wow. Okay. And at first, it was like this small little stupid shit thing. They only had like four or five characters in there. And the response was so positive that a lot of people were like donating their time to help develop and help promote this game. And now I think like the roster is like 12 or 14 characters deep. Now they shelved the project, but they've shelved the project like once or twice already because they were like, we need to focus on origin of storms. But the response for Sonic Smackdown is so (laughs) intense that they keep on going back to it. So there's still about like three or four more characters that they were intending on coming out with. But you know, we'll we'll see what happens. We we'll see what happens. Brilliant. 
I guarantee you they're going to end up going back to it and finishing it off. Okay, I'm, I'm intrigued. I Yeah, I want to play this. I'll send you a link. <laughs> okay, I'll send you a link lovely. to the game. Cool. Sega doesn't want to do that, Graham. They would make too much money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, cool. Scotty, did you have any questions about uh, Shin Megami Tensei or Sonic Smackdown? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm up to date. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, so my pick this week is because uh, it's because it's Halloweeny kind of time, all spooky stuff. I'm going with Alien Isolation, and as I sort of mentioned last week on the show when Danny was on, this is a game that I will always buy, but I'd never really play because it is too scary for me. I am, a, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I'm a big wimp. I've Started playing this game. I own it on the Xbox 360. I own it on the Xbox One. And I own it on my PC. And I've basically got to the point where you meet the alien for the second time. And I just can't play the game. But the the, the very first time you met the alien, I genuinely screamed out loud and kind of couldn't do anything. <laughs> like, it came at me and I just sort of sat there and, <laughs> like, really terrified, screaming at the screen and close my eyes and then the, the second time I had to reload and try and do it again I just basically bolted and managed to do it okay but the next time I sort of came across the alien I was just walking along like the roof the part of the roof sort of caves in and you see like a tail flip out and I was just like yeah I'm done I can't I can't do this I'm <laughs> gonna have a heart attack any second now but I love the game I think it looks beautiful it, and as I sort of mentioned earlier um, well, Antichrist sort of mentioned it earlier, but uh, a- Alien is actually one of my favourite horror movies of all time, like sci-fi. So it's a sci-fi movie, it's also horror. It's one of my favourites, and this made me feel like I was genuinely in the movie, even though it's set in a different sort of time period. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I don't think I'd ever f- play it. Oh, my intention actually is to one day stream it, possibly with Chris. Not not Antichrist, but other Chris. Chris Powell. Yeah, Grant and- doesn't like me. Uh, I could stream. That's just why, why don't we stream it together? Let's stream it together, buddy. We can we can use um, Parsec and oh, play yeah. it on Steam together. Like you know, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll basically walk along on the easy bits, and as soon as I think something's going to happen, I go, "There you go. Now you can take control." <laughs> Hold my hand, so, please. Yes, hand. please do. But my intention is one day I will play it because I think just for shits and giggles, it's going to be just funny because I'm going to cry basically. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that, it's that, that's how terrible I get on it. But yeah. And you haven't even like gotten to the scariest part. Cause when you <laughs> encounter the androids more in that game and they're like dead red eyes and their monotone voices, that's when shit gets creepier. It's not even the Xeno. That's the scariest part of that. I, I, I've been told that and I've been told there's way more scarier bits in it, but yeah, <laughs> It's, it's. I still have to go back to that. So I didn't play. I have that game. I didn't play it. My wife did, and mm. she made the the pro gamer move of playing that game while pregnant, and Whoa. that that was. I'm pretty sure she almost went into forced labor playing that <laughs> game. She stopped playing it halfway through. I think it was around the the same part that you're at, uh, Graham, where she's just like, "Nope, I'm done. I can't do it right now. I'll fucking pop this baby out four months early and." Uh, <laughs> We ain't about to do that. So I've been meaning to get into Alien Isolation. I heard. Oh, it's baby, like let, let's do it. Let's stream together. Let's let's play yeah. this game together, buddy. I'm with it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So Scotty the Vampire that Slayer. Conversation to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your pick of the week, Scotty? Um, I mean, mine's not as intense as early childbirth at all, but uh, <laughs> I. <laughs> That is not going to be the episode of this t- uh, title I of this episode. Be. <laughs> <laughs> Early childbirth. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I mentioned that I bought it last week, um, but I did get to sit down and watch the documentary, The Last Blockbuster, which was um, is the that's a decent shot of the thing. You can put it up somewhere or whatever, but so, yeah. it's. Um, a documentary Just- about the last blockbuster video store that is in Bend, Oregon. Um, it's a uh, very ha- heartfelt, uh, kind of a good, just a feel good kind of thing. Um, damn it, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted because he just posted the title in the, our chat, everybody, um, of this episode, probably. But yeah, no, Last Blockbuster is really cool um, for anyone that was uh, a frequent shopper of Blockbuster or misses physical 
rental stores for movies, oh, games, yeah. and stuff like that. I they they were still around when I was in college, so a lot of um, Friday nights I would kind of just go and wander around before really having Netflix or anything like that. And I enjoyed I enjoyed I could easily kill an hour just looking at the different um, movies and finding weird ones, dumb ones that you'd never heard of, which is harder to do with the streaming services for sure. Like I don't think I would have stumbled across. Uh, what the hell was that thing you told us about, Graham? The Electric Fantasy or whatever? Electric Dreams. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, electric <laughs> Dreams. Oops, like you wouldn't find you would you. I, I guess there's a chance you'd stumble across that through like Amazon Prime or Netflix or Hulu. But like walking around a rental store, you'd find stuff like that. You know. Um, but no, there's a lot of celebrities in it, like the uh, Kevin Smith, Ron Funches, um, uh, Sam Levine. What's the Doug Benson? I don't know who that is. Adam Brody. But uh, a lot of people in it talk about they either worked at Blockbuster or just have really fond memories of it. And it's really cool. And the timeline of it is really interesting. Um, They talk about how Blockbuster actually had the opportunity to buy Netflix at one point and other stuff around that. Um, Which I think is a more common fact than people think. Uh, I remember hearing about that and stuff. but no, it's it's really interesting. It's a good documentary. It's fun. Uh, it's um, it's uh, I, I enjoyed it, and I the people in it, and like the way they they show like other mom and pop stores and talk about rental businesses and things like that, and VHS tapes. Like I think everyone who was in this documentary, I think they're handed a copy of the movie at one point, but it's a VHS, like an old blockbuster tape uh, okay. uh, case thing. And they're just like, oh, man, can I have this? And like, so I was looking like, wait, did they put this out on VHS? Because I've seen stuff getting released on VHS lately, um, like certain horror documentaries and movies. And um, that this this the people that made this documentary also did a uh, ska music documentary recently. They released that on VHS. Oh, wow. So like, I feel like everyone that is interviewed in this movie, if they had the opportunity to buy VHS tapes again, they would. And like this documentary slowly convinced me that I would not be totally surprised with how vinyl has come back. I would not be totally surprised if VHS tapes somehow yeah. made, had a resurgence at this point. Cause it's like not, not the best example, but it's funny to me how the latest Tony Hawk game, um, there was a Tony Hawk HD port of the games or whatever that kind of sucked it was only on psn and 360 marketplace in that game they replaced all the hidden tapes with hidden dvds but then in the latest tony hawk remake everything's back to hidden tapes and like nice. you know nostalgia is all the rage forever and, and is right now of course but like vhs tapes and people if if pal was on here he would tell us how he's been collecting them again um especially through horror movies and stuff like Oh, God, I don't want to say it, but I'm afraid that VHS might come back. <laughs> no, please, God, no. Yeah, like, That's like a stupid theme that I see. Like, I know that there's probably other genres that do it, but like, I'm a big fan of black metal. And now like, the big thing in black metal is to put all your music on a fucking cassette. <laughs> oh, that's not like, just... Why? I know, it's not yeah. just, I know it's not just black metal, but it's like, that's like the most... Black metal is the most hipster type of music that I listen to. And you just get these these tryhards, these troglodytes that put their music on cassette <laughs> and then expect me to play it. And I'm just like, no, fucking no. Give me like an official release. Like a, I'll listen to your digital album, but don't send me a cassette tape with it. Some of them like pack the two of them together, like some sort of justification for me to go buy it. I was like, no, that's going in target practice. Bad in cage that shit. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> Yeah, oh, the, yeah, that is that is a thing with music right now is uh, bands are doing singles, which is a cassette with just a single on it. Oh. Um, my buddy Lee has has said to me how like he needs to get something that plays cassettes because he started to get into those. I'm like, don't do it. And um, do and it. Uh, every everything the the synth band the Midnight they release every album on cassette. It's a lot of thing with synth synth bands. They do that, and some pop punk bands are doing it now too. Uh, it's a weird, dumb thing. I don't, I don't get it because that is that is quite literally the least efficient way to listen to music. <laughs> um, like the reason I, why vinyl is so good is because it's got one of the highest, if not the highest quality version of a song. You know, like that's why, like, and the and, and the artwork is great too. 
but like when you talk about like vinyl quality music, that's like on the same level as like a digital FLAC file. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like going to cassette, cassette is dirty. It gets dusty. You're always yeah. going to have that like that that speaker feedback on there. No, get that shit out of here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's funny. If, if you want to know an even more inappropriate way to listen to music, I have a friend. I don't think he's doing it anymore, but in his spare time, he started. He started up this thing where he was releasing songs by other bands, like legitimate, legitimate bands, on floppy disks. Like, and, and the, 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 why? The, um, <laughs> it was just like a fun thing he just started doing. But like some band, like little indie bands, started approaching him. But like, the, it's almost like just basic chip tune style stuff. That's all you could get on there. You can't get like a proper song with proper singing on there because you've got like, was it one point four megabytes of data or something ridiculous? Like, yeah. there's no data on there. But yeah, he, he started yeah. it just as a fun project, and people started coming to him and going, "Yeah, put my band on this." It's like, okay, so like a whole album is like twenty discs, <laughs> like floppy discs. Yeah, and this by the way, this is like he was doing this like last time I spoke to him about it. It was like twenty twelve, so it's like. This was in the last 10 years, basically. I think he stopped it now because I just quickly Googled it and I can't see his website anymore. But um, he had a website and everything and he showed, he showed, paid me some of the stuff. I was like, wow. But yeah, it's insane. Um, the freaking, um, uh, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, the guy that made the Snatcher repro I got, he does game soundtracks and puts them on mini discs. Sony mini oh, discs. Wow. That's probably even and worse, actually, because no one has seen me this. Probably. <laughs> um, but there's also uh, Limited Run released the Snatcher soundtrack on cassette. I don't know why, but they did. <laughs> and I have it sitting behind me. Um, because it's kind of it's 80s, cool... but futuristic. Well, uh... Yeah, it's a cool yeah. red cassette, like transparent cassette. <laughs> yeah, can't talk. Yeah. Um, anyway, the last blockbuster is great. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah I, I was just... Go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. I was, I was just going to say that there is something about, while I don't, let's say, want everything to go back to VHS, there is something about renting DVDs and renting movies that I really like the idea of. Like, I, you can rent stuff from Amazon and stuff, and like Xbox, Microsoft Store and stuff online. But I'm like, I will never pay money to rent a digital version of something. Like, because I feel like I can buy it for like a few dollars more and I can buy it. But at Blockbuster, back in the day especially, these were movies you couldn't get hold of anywhere. They were like brand new releases right. that just come out of the cinema. Right. It's like, oh my God, I can be the first to see this. I'll pay over here. It was like three pounds for like a weekend or something. There's like nothing. It felt really good. So it's like, yeah, pop to the shop. And as you say, like you get to look at different, like there's all the different genres. It's very easy. To, like you might find a little like movie. You think, oh, this sounds interesting. I'll get three, three movies this weekend instead. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, think I kind part of that wish that was still a thing. I just really wish it was. I think part of that is like the nostalgia of going through the ritual, like going into the blockbuster, yeah. mm. you know, getting your grubby little fingers all over the uh, <laughs> the N64 and PlayStation games or whatever movies that you're sifting yeah. through, you know, spending an hour, a half hour, gotta get the popcorn, gotta get the dots and the milk duds, right? The the movie size <laughs> milk duds because it's a it's a novelty and it's bringing it to your home. I think like. Part of going through the motions is what mm. what a lot of people miss about Blockbuster. Um, totally. Yeah. yeah. I was um, looking... No, you go ahead. I, I have a kind of a way to add to what Graham said, but go ahead, Chris. No, I was just looking up stuff about the last Blockbuster. Apparently, mm. in September, they gave people the opportunity to rent uh, the store as an Airbnb. Yep. What? For $4 a night. Yep. That's pretty yeah. cool. I hope they, they have like a, cool. like a retro game room slash living room set up mm -hmm. in there. That's so cool. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Wow. It's 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 crazy. Um, yeah, and like uh, I've I've had this happen recently <clears throat> that um, I have. There's been like indie films and other crap that I would find walking around places in college, different rental stores that I have still not been able to find on streaming services, but like I could find the DVD and rent it and stuff. So I'm like very casually, not really on strong hunts for some stuff, but sometimes I've seen like certain things that at, for some reason at um, the, the horror conventions that Rachel and I go to, a lot of people are selling like 
like uh, VHSs, but also just random movies here and there. So I've like spotted certain indie films here and there that I've never seen on streaming services. Only remember renting from like a blockbuster or a home fan. It's gone. It, it's become less convenient to rent some things. And how you mentioned, Graham, you didn't want to pay a couple bucks to rent something. We've done that. And I've ranted on that so many different times on this podcast, but it's just the fact of the matter that like no one sell it's it's something like a DVD that was very poorly produced or less produced or or something. So it's like I will just pay the four dollars rather than trying to find this Blu-ray online through some back ass website mm -hmm. and pay twenty dollars for something we might watch once. I, I hate doing it. I hate renting anything digitally like that. But sometimes it, it's such a pain in the ass that like we want to watch this movie now, but it's less convenient to do so. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a really it's a good documentary. It's a fun thing. It's a it, it talks about it was kind of perfect timing with the timeline as well, because there was at one point for a while just three blockbusters in the States. And one of them mm -hmm. was in Alaska. And they talk about that one um, and things like that. And and uh, I mentioned last week how we've talked about going to Oregon at some point or just kind of making a trip, a reason to go to that side of the country and and end up in this place as well. Um, but it's cool. It's fun. And I, I recommend the documentary. I think it's available on some streaming services. Um, but honestly, I, something like this, you should probably just buy it because you're I don't think you'll be able to find it for yeah. a long time, like streaming anywhere, really. And it's it has a but there's a bunch of bonus stuff on here too like other interviews they didn't use and um and just in extended interviews and things like that with it so mm. it's pretty cool it's fun and and if you've ever worked in retail you can relate to a lot of it as well um like that i i won't give away too much because it's it's just a fun thing but if you've ever had to be a manager at a store and you need like supplies you will just go and buy it because your store needs it and i can relate to that <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the last blockbuster. I recommend so, it. Just to clarify one thing, the Alaska one has shut down, and this is literally the one in Oregon is literally the last one, yeah? Um, yes, man, it is still a nice. blockbuster, like through the franchise blockbuster. I thought I thought my misconception was that they that Blockbuster was no longer an actual company and that they essentially like bought the rights to use that name and that they were just like self efficient now, but they're not. It is still legitimately through yeah. Blockbuster. Yeah. Oh, that's so crazy how they were multi like worldwide basically international now just one store all because of they, like, uh, things a like fun Netflix fact of it i didn't Jesus. oh sorry uh go ahead graham i was just saying just 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 through like a couple of other companies like netflix and amazon basically just took took the rug from out of under them they went from massive just to one one tiny little yeah. store. It's yeah 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 um, I did not know this or I somehow blocked it out of my psyche, but there was at one point like a blockbuster award show as well <laughs> that existed for a short pocket of time. Yeah. Wow. So it's good. Yeah. It was, I, I felt like they could have actually added some more to it. So it's some documentaries, if they're not done well, uh, unfortunately I've seen more poorly done documentaries than good ones. So this one's done well enough that it kind of zips by as well. I and mean, it has yeah. like good interviews and stuff like that in it. So but yeah. I, but what just very very last thing um one of the guys on my team the content team at the company i work at gift gaff he used to work for blockbuster in the uk not in the store yeah. but he actually used to be one of their kind of content people but he used to do video interviews on red carpets and stuff and he was just oh. telling me stuff about like how they were planning to do things like netflix um like streaming services but at the time they started yeah. doing it they didn't really have the technology in the right place and they didn't really have the connections with the studio to so actually have the digital versions or something and yeah like it's just it's just it's all the wrong timing for them basically he's got fascinating stories about stuff like that um to do with blockbuster oh, i'm sure at least the uk version of blockbuster so yeah but maybe i'll get him on the show one day and you can we can chat more about it because i think you might find sure. it sure you should yeah. you should honestly just buy this documentary and mail it to him because he'd probably find it very interesting do you know what I was actually thinking? If I have a Secret Santa this year, I'm going to do that. Maybe we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He's a ghost. <laughs>